Hi guys, it's Veronica from Veronica's Ventures. I make new videos every Sunday and Wednesday on personal growth and development. I share my journey and the life hacks I learned along the way to help you be successful too. Stay tuned for today's episode. What is a mind map? Mind maps are a visual way to organize concepts and ideas so that you can see the complete overall view of all your information. It uses spatial organization, color, and images to break down topics and ideas. Mind maps are similar to spider diagrams and concept maps. The key difference is that mind maps tend to be more rigid in their structure, but essentially they're the same thing. How do mind maps help us? Well, they're quick and simple to make, and they're easy for our brains to understand because they closely mirror how our brains are structured. Plus, you're using both the left side and the right side of your brain, and you actively have to sort through that information to make your map. This allows you to make new connections, increase your understanding, and even leads to new ideas. Additionally, a mind map forces you to focus on a topic and review what you know as you organize it. And thanks to its colors, pictures, simple keywords, and spatial organization, it's easier for our brains to remember. Plus, just making the mind map increases your ability to recall the information. You can't go wrong. These benefits make it ideal for brainstorming, writing, taking notes, and studying. How do you make a mind map? Well, there are four key steps involved in creating a mind map. Step number one, determine your main idea. Easy peasy. Step number two, create the basic structure for organizing your ideas. So you wanna use radiant thinking. Start from the center and radiate outwards. So your key concept is gonna go in the middle. Then you'll radiate out to the main branches known as basic organizing ideas or BOIs. Next, you wanna fill in additional details. So those BOIs will radiate further out to subcategories, which will sit on smaller branches. The smaller branches are connected to the BOIs, which are connected to the key concept. It really sounds more complicated than it actually is. After you're done creating your mind map, you wanna go back and revisit it, but not right away. So review your mind map after you've had a chance to complete your first attempt, but not immediately. Once your thoughts have had time to settle, so to speak, um, you can go back and review your mind map and revise it if necessary. You can add new details, you can recreate it on another piece of paper to organize it differently. Like I said, this sounds harder than it actually is. Think of organizing a book, for example. Your main branches or your BOIs would be the chapters of that book and your subtopics would be the plot points in each chapter. In addition, you can also use this technique to emotionally regulate. Why? Remember what I said in my video about bilateral stimulation and how it helps people calm down? I'll link it in the comments just in case you haven't had a chance to check it out. This technique actually works very much the same way because you're using both sides of your brain. I had never thought of using it this way until my therapist had me do it in session and it was pretty awesome. I couldn't believe the amount of perspective and clarity and even just getting it all out and it was really reduced that anxiety. What are some awesome. tips and techniques to get the most out of the experience? First, you wanna make sure you draw quickly and uncritically. Get a large sheet of paper and just go. You want to use keywords and symbols and codes rather than phrases because they're easier to remember. You also want to use images and colors because it'll stimulate your brain's visual and creative capacity. Plus, it's more fun that way. You also want to use arrows to denote links between ideas and annotations to reference other sources or other mind maps. You also want to have fun creating your mind maps and make them as beautiful as possible. Whatever you do, make it uniquely you. There's no wrong way to do this. Mind maps, concept maps, and spider diagrams can be used for just about anything. The next time your mind is swirling with thoughts or ideas or emotions, not that your mind can have emotions, but you get my point, try a mind map or a concept map or a spider diagram. It'll be fun and it will provide a lot of clarity. Don't believe me? Check this out. I'm only going to flash it quickly because it's kind of personal, but also I didn't use the whole keyword thing because I had a lot on my mind, but check this out. Yeah. I had a lot on my mind, right? Anyway guys, thanks so much for watching. If you got anything from this video, please leave a comment below and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any new content. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and Clubhouse, and at veronicaventures.com. Thanks guys, have a great day. Bye.